In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to find the six trig functions of any angle. We kind of talked about this a little bit when we learned about the unit circle, but I just want to put some, uh, just kind of remind you guys of this stuff. So we're going to graph the angles 30 degrees and 150 degrees below. So pause it, graph them, come back. 150 degrees is just shy of 180 degrees. Uh, these are called reference angles. So basically they're forming the same angle with the axis here. And so the reference angles. Also 150 degrees is a reflection across the Y axis. 30 isn't, 30 has, 30 degrees has um, a lot of other angles that can be, 30 can be used as a reference angle for, I said that weird. Um, but 150 is a reference angle, 210 is reference, negative 30, there's a bunch of them. So um, to help you identify that, you can basically use multiples of 180 or 360. So 360 we learned in an earlier, earlier video would be a co-terminal angle, which means they have the same terminal. And then multiples of 180 would be that uh, reflection. Also in a previous video with the unit circle, we were able to identify the trig function values for this quadrant here. So essentially, if you can figure out the reference angle, then you don't have to do all the extra work of, oh no, 150, I'm not sure what that is. Well, 150 is reference to 30, and we know what 30 is. So that makes it a little bit easier, just kind of simplify stuff. Um, with these examples down here, we're going to find a reference angle for them. And again, what you're doing is you're adding or subtracting multiples of 180 or 360, kind of depending on the angle. And if you need to, sometimes it helps to just draw a picture to figure out where that is, to figure out what the reference angle might be. 190 is kind of a weird one, uh, but if we were to subtract 180, we would get 10 degrees there for a reference angle. Negative 60 degrees is the clockwise version of 60 degrees. So you could just say 60 there, um, or you could add 180, or you could add 360. There's lots of different possibilities there for that. 1470, 1470 is pretty big. So I'm gonna use multiples of 360. Um, and you can just kind of play around with that to figure out how many multiples. I'm thinking four will do because four times three is 12. So that'll get me pretty close. Uh, 1470 minus four times 360. We'll just try it. We'll just try it and see. No problem. No harm there. 1470 minus four times 360. That'll do. 30. I got. I did get close. 30 degrees would be the reference angle there. And then negative 135, if you remember from the previous video, I mentioned that anything ending in five is gonna be reference angle for 45. So I could just say 45 degrees, or you can do um, negative 135 plus 180, 45 degrees uh, or 360 or whatever. So there's lots of possibilities there. I try to stay in that first quadrant because that's really where, you know, that's kind of your bread and butter there. It's easier to remember one quadrant than it is to remember all four. So find the ordered pair for 150 degrees using the reference angle and use that point, the ordered pair, to find all six trig functions. So I know that the reference angle for 150 degrees is 30 degrees. I also know that the coordinate for 30 degrees is root three over two comma one half. Now 150 degrees, if I were to draw a picture of it, which I did, thank goodness, is over here in quadrant two. That means in quadrant two, I'm gonna have a negative X and a positive Y. So for 150 degrees, I'm gonna have negative root three over two and positive one half. This gives me X and Y. Now I can use 
those coordinates and my trig ratios to find the six trig functions. We're going to do sine, cosine, tangent, and the reciprocal functions. So I want you to pause it, try it, come back and check your work. Now you should get for sine, you have the y value, which is a half. Cosine, you have the x value, which is negative square root three over two. Tangent, you have y over x. When you simplify that, you get negative root three over three. Uh, cosecant, flip sine, so you get two. Secant, you flip cosine, get negative two root three over three. And cotangent, you flip tangent and you get negative root three. Um, just some background information here. If you're struggling with the flipping and simplifying, if you were to flip uh, this one, you would get three over root three, rationalize the denominator. And we get this and those threes divide. So that's why we end up with negative root three on the bottom. So now I want you to find the value of the expression sine of negative 45. I want you to try the whole thing on your own. So pause it, draw your picture, try the whole thing on your own, come back and check your work. So for mine, I drew a picture, negative 45 is clockwise, so it goes down 45. The reference angle is 45 degrees. I know that the X and Y coordinate of 45 degrees is root two over two, comma, root two over two. So to do this, I need to, de I need to take into consideration the signs, positive, negative, of those coordinates. Negative 45 is in the fourth quadrant, which means that we have a positive X and a negative Y, which means all I have to change here for this angle is the Y value to negative. Then sine is the Y value. So sine of negative 45 is negative square root two over two, and that's it, that's all at once. Next one. We want to find the value of tangent 840. Pause it, try it, come back. Okay, 840 was pretty big, so I used multiples of 360 to find the coterminal side. So that means that they will have the same terminal side with 120 degrees, which means that I don't need to worry about changing the signs or anything because basically if we were just to spin around, 840 degrees, we would end up at 120 degrees. So I already know the X and Y coordinate for 120 degrees. And now I'm just gonna use that to find tangent. That's gonna be Y over X. Flip that and multiply. And we just get square root three. Oh my goodness, negative square root three. Sorry about that, drop my negative. Be very careful of that. Okay, so that's how you do it by hand. You find that reference angle or that coterminal angle and there you go. Now you can do this in the calculator. Now, if you do it in your calculator, you're not going to get the uh, exact answers. Like here, I got negative square root three. Your calculator is not gonna give you uh, depending on your calculator. If you have like a TI Inspire or something, then yes, probably. But if you have just a normal graphing calculator, it's going to give it to you in decimal form. Decimal form is an approximation. So it's an approximate solution for what you're typing in, which is fine, um, you know, for the most part. But if you're trying to do something very important, like build something like a bridge or a roller coaster or something, then you probably want to stick with exact solutions. You don't want to be rounding too much. But if you want um, to solve a simple problem and get pretty close, then calculators are fine. First, before you uh, start, you want to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode because we're talking about degrees. We will talk about radian mode later. Right now, we're focusing on degrees. So to do that, you're gonna go to mode, and mine looks a little different, but um, I'm gonna make sure that mine's down kind of towards the middle, it says angle, and it says radian degree. I'm making sure that degree is toggled on, and it is. And then I'm gonna type in 
Um, let's uh, let's actually do one that we've already done. I think we did. Let's let's do sine of one fifty. That'll be an easy one to check. Sine of one fifty, and I got point five, which I should should be one half. So that's how you do that, and then cosine tangent. And down here, the example I have is sine of one hundred and thirty. So just type in sine one hundred and thirty. Whoops, not one. There you go. Like that. And there's the decimal approximation. And I have the keys there down at the bottom. So, oh, I already spoiled the first one for you, but go ahead and try these in your calculator, round to four decimal places and come back and check your work. Okay, so for cosine 20, if we're going to four decimal places, we should get, uh, I'm gonna do squiggly, which means approximately. Point, I guess it would be if I go to four, oh, four, there we go, nine, three, nine, seven. So that six has a nine behind it. And so I rounded up that six to the next one. And this is an example as to when the calculator comes in handy because 20 is not on my unit circle. So I don't have like a quickly I could pull that out. So calculator is nice for that. And then tangent of 50 is about 1.191. Eight, that seven has a five behind it, so we round it up, and that's it. So that is all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help, and I'll see you in the next one.